thank you for hanging out with me once again. This time I'm going to be covering Phantasmagoria 2, a puzzle of the flesh, or a puzzle of flesh. So, this game, uh, I did not play nearly as frequently as I'd played Phantasmagoria 1, so I did not have it as memorized as Phantasmagoria 1. Uh, but similar to Phantasmagoria 1, it is pretty difficult to basically die in this game, or, um, you know, basically reach an end. It's literally not until near the end of the chapter when you're sneaking in that you may get caught if you don't do something quick enough, which I think you'll see in this. I can't remember if I edited it out. Because this video ended up being six and a half hours long. There is a section at the end of the game where you travel to another, I don't know, I would say like dimension kind of thing. And the the puzzle while you're there is, I don't even know how to politely say it. It's very illogical and there is this one thing that you have to do at the end to get out of it. And it's this weird contraption that looks like it should be something from Sierra's The Incredible Machine. Um, and it probably took me well over 20 tries to bypass it. And so I ended up trimming most of that out. So I think I left two or three attempts just to show how messy that puzzle is. But I literally spent over, I think, an hour and a half on that puzzle trying to figure out so, anyway, we're in the intro right now. We see that Curtis seems to be in a psych ward. And uh, he seems like a pretty normal dude, right? Like a normal human. But uh, you will learn that that's not the case. Which is unfortunate because I think it took away from the story. Like, Curtis being a little insane. Uh, or slowly going insane seem like a pretty cool idea like you're controlling a character who is losing his mind and he is in this game but the end result as to why it's like one of those movies where you watch it and they don't know how to end it so they give you this really weird ending where you're walking out of the theater going what did I just watch that's how I feel about Phantasmagoria 2 the game is actually really good all the way up to that last part where you go into the other dimension and really find out the truth about who you are or what you were. So anyway, so we got the intro. It's one year later after our hero here, Curtis, has been at the psych ward. He's trying to make a better life for himself and uh, he works at a company called Wintech. And uh, since the game is so long, there is actually a number of Easter eggs that I discovered after playing the game. There's a few that I knew, and this had been by accident a long time ago when I first played it, or that I'd Googled it eons ago and I still remembered it. Um, but I figured I'd go through some of those as part of the commentary. So right there, there is that mask that you can see when Curtis walks out. When you walk into the hallway and turn back around, you can visibly see that mask. If you position the cursor over the mask in the hallway, and then you just type the word burp, which is weird because in this game it's all point and click, so you wouldn't think that you'd be able to type anything. But if you put the cursor over it and you type the word burp all over case, the hallway will shake as if there was an uh, earthquake. And I'll eventually do it, I think it's like in chapter two or three, I remember that there was something about that. And then if you type burp all lowercase except for the P as an upper case, it does the same thing but like a, a more violent tremble, which I also end up doing shortly after the original burp thing. Good morning, Bob. So while we're here in the living room, there's also a book that is visible on the um, living room table and no matter what you do to try to click it it doesn't do anything however and once again this is something that you just normally wouldn't do in this game if you hit control alt and then click 
then what it'll do is it'll show a book that says Wes's uh, big book of tractors, book one, if you do it in chapter one. And then um, also here, if you control alt click on the large painting at the top of the left where Curtis is facing Blob's cage, you'll see a tractor picture. This um, egg also works in every chapter. So for the, tr um, for the tractor book, I think you can only do it, um, you have to do it each chapter. So in chapter two, it'll be, you know, Wes's big book of tractors, book two. So if you wait until like, for example, chapter four, do it, which is when I think I remember doing this, it says um, Wes's big book of tractors, book four. But if you actually do it each chapter, there's another Easter egg that it shows. And then um, when Curtis is facing Blob's cage, if you click on Curtis's nose until he picks it, you'll hear Homer Simpson, I guess, eating something. This egg will work in every chapter apart from chapter three. And then if you keep clicking on Curtis's nose after performing the above step, Curtis will make a farting noise at the fourth pick. This egg will work in every chapter apart from chapter three. So I remembered uh, that, similar to Phantasmagoria, the first one, there is the eye icon where you can examine things. Uh, unlike Phantasmagoria 1, uh, there's nothing that's 3D so that you need to flip or open or do anything fancy with. So I'm just moving the mouse around to see what is similar to what I did with Phantasmagoria 1. Just kind of move it around until something highlights. So if you see that radio down in the lower right, um, if you click at least 10 times on that radio, um, a jukebox of Phantasmagoria 2's um, game music will show up. You can try this Easter egg in chapters 2 and 4, but remember that the points it awards, which is 5, is only on the first activation. If you try this in chapter 5, it'll actually crash the game, apparently. And then once you've accessed the street box, you can take a look at the picture of Gary Spinnard, the composer at the top of the screen, and then listen to his music. Use the top arrows to select the game location and the bottom arrows to select the various musical pieces of relevant to location. The bottom arrows may also be used as slower means of changing the game's location music. So that's something I've never done. So on this one, what you can do is if you take the inventory item, click on the eye, there's like that little letter with the magnifying glass. You can actually read what's being said. It's curious that it actually shows a real address by the looks of it. It's 
it's not so bad in Curtis's um, apartment, but when you get to Winetech, when you get to his place of work, the the positioning of everything and trying to move around his office is highly confusing because there's times where you have to move the cursor almost to the top of the screen to actually be able to move forward. Otherwise, your only options are to go like left and right. Oh, man. No wallet. So he did try to leave to go to work, but eh, no wallet. So now we need to find his wallet. Which logically you would think would have been in the drawer that we looked in earlier, but it's not the case. Oddly, if you click on the couch, there's the wallet. Bob? And he blames Bob. I should start, not Bob Blob. Now that you've looked at the wallet, you can actually pick up Blob from the cage. Wicked rat. You stole my wallet. Admit it. So now you kind of know what to do. You've taken the rat. He's now in your inventory. And apparently right, only the middle cushion. Rat. Drag my wallet under the, the one that works. So bring it back. <laughs> Even though he puts him on the far left. Blob. Blob, come out of there. So now Blob isn't coming out from under the couch. So we need to lure him out. In what better way than with the candy? Or the granola bar. Hey, Bob. Hey, check it out. Oh, there you are. Gotcha. Oh, very good. All right. Just seems like it would have been easier just to move the nightstand and reach under there and get the uh, wallet. We can head to work. So you see there's a couple places we can go home, which we were already at. Wine Tech, which is work, and then Dreamy Tree, which is a cafe place. Cafe, diner, I don't know. So we see a badge reader. I like that Curtis actually looks down at the badge reader, giving the player a clue, like, I can't go in the store unless you use the badge reader. Can't go in the other door, you'll find out that's, like, the boss. And this one you can actually go in because there is no badge reader, and it's the network room. Now, in the network room, if you click the screwdriver on Curtis five times, and the wallet on him once for a bouncing Curtis, complete with the boing sound effects. The inventory items will highlight as you use them on Curtis to activate this egg. Once again, never done that one either. So there are a bunch of Easter eggs that I feel like I should go back and do and record, but this was just a playthrough of me just trying to get through the game. So for the most part, I was unaware of most of these Easter eggs until I went back to see if I'd missed anything um, in the game, and I found a site that listed a number of Easter eggs. So 
So you move those boxes and it reveals a little door. Which you've got to wonder why there's such a small door in a network closet. Like even if someone was hiding something, you think they would also hide the door. Like just bury it all. Why even have a tiny door there? There's much more in the one or uh, in the network closet. So you notice if you look at your put your wallet over the eye, uh, you can actually click over it, and your badge is in there. So now you can swipe your badge, and we can get to work. So while he's standing here in this position, if you alt-click on Curtis's belly button area, when he's in the office cubicle area in a position where you can see his entire body and the water cooler is shown to the right of the screen, keep alt-clicking until you see a floating head of Andy Hoyos. I don't know who that is. Curtis will shake his head vigorously. This egg will not work in chapters 2 or 4. So these are the cubicles of various employees. You'll find out because pretty soon everyone will be in their cubicle and you'll be able to talk to them all. That second cube is yours. The first one belongs to your friend Trevor. If you notice the um, behind Curtis, if we can get him to turn around again eventually. Your boss's door was left ajar inside. Oh, someone's in their cube. And just like every game, basically talk to him until you run out of dialogue. I'm sorry to bother you, but um, I'm finishing up the uh, Veneman document today. I'm just wondering what you want me to try to start next. Oh, let's see. I think I'll put you on the documentation for Allotheria 9. Great. Thanks. Oh, Curtis. Nice work. Things seem good. scared me, Curtis. Oh, you weren't too scared of me last night, now were you? Mm, last night was so... <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's some uh, romance there. I love you. It's like PDA at work for uh, the 90s. Secrecy. Are you ashamed of me or something? No, of course not. I just, I just don't want everybody knowing our business. That's all. I want you all to myself. Well, by making people know that you're dating would be a great way of keeping her to yourself, yeah. Curtis. Okay. Hey. 
these for the postcard. Things are about to get awkward. Curtis, I didn't send you this. I've never seen it before. No? <laughs> oh, it's... Well, that's just a joke, then, I'm sure. It's Trevor. He's just screwing around. Spoiler alert, it's not Trevor. However, speaking about Trevor, let's talk about the next Easter egg. If you log into the Wine Tech Network, which we'll do later when we sit down at our cubicle, log in as Trevor Barnes and use the password of belly button, all one word. Click on the games directory and play one or all of Ping Pong, Wine Vade, or Wine Tech. Or sorry, Wine Track. Be warned, these games are very primitive. This egg works in every chapter. A lot like your mother. Mm. So he just showed her a picture of his mom and dad, and she says, You look a lot like your mom. You'll find out that his relationship with his mother was not a good one. the party too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you had that. I'm kind of surprised that you let anyone take a picture of us out in public together. There's some hostility there, I feel like. Anyway, if you've activated the previous Easter egg, alt click on the winvade.exe. If you win the game, the spacecraft will change to human heads of director Andy Hoyos. That explains who Andy Hoyos is. Producer Matthew Thornton and project manager Tammy Dargan. You'll hear a deep laugh and a voice will say, stay a while, stay forever. And then just for fun, play this new game, Boss Faders, for a few moments. This egg works in every chapter. The next e easter egg you'll see me do, but I'll talk about it now since not a lot is going on. You log into the Wine Tech Network as either Joycelyn or Teresa with the password of XXX. Um, a small black and white box will appear on the screen and ask you to enter the nudity code. This egg so works in every chapter. So the nudity code the is A-D-R-I-E-N-N-E. If you do it right, it says nudity code, nudity code activated. So you can follow the steps and do the same password and it'll deactivate it. Tom, hey, I'm really sorry I'm late. I, this is going to sound really stupid, but my uh, rat stole my wallet. <laughs> well, at least that's original. You look tired, Curtis. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just, uh, I've just been having some trouble sleeping lately, that's all. If you ever have any kind of a problem, Curtis, I hope you know that you can come to me. You're a fine employee, and I'll always help you if I can. Oh, thanks. So, as always, every time you talk with someone in this game, see if any of the inventory uh, objects actually light up and see if they react to anything. Hey, Teresa. You're about to find um, out who sent that other postcard. I'm going to the main directory. I'm going to need it soon. What do you give me for it? Um, and she is not at all passive. Uh... <laughs> What I did like about this game is the characters all had very defining personalities. Although, I will say, and I even forgot when I played it this time around, that 
um, Curtis's best friend Trevor is actually gay and he talks about going out on dates for guys and I had totally forgotten because to me Trevor did not come across okay. as being gay there's no like um, no hint of it like he doesn't really <laughs> allude to anything about it until he suddenly just says he's going out on a date with a guy and Curtis will later say and this is when he's talking to the shrink much later but I'll talk about it now Curtis will actually mention that he thinks he has feelings for his best friend now for me that came out of the blue because he's definitely flirting a lot with two women which is not to say he couldn't be bisexual or bi curious but there's no indication like he doesn't flirt with Trevor there's no dialogue you know some you know like funny potentially underlining theme of dialogue between him and Trevor that may indicate that you know there's a playful attraction that may be more there's nothing like that it just kind of just happens when he's talking to the shrink where he goes ah you know what I think I'm attracted to my best friend this dude here Bob, hey Bob. is Listen, a I'm jerk the venom and files. you mind if I borrow them for an hour or so forget it rat boy just... they wouldn't help you anyway we both know that I'm the one that's going to get that big promotion, so, um, piss off. So, thanks, Bob. As always, it's... Don't worry. Pleasure. Bob will get what's coming to him. Unfortunately, some other people will also. But, uh, Bob gets something coming his way. But keep in mind, he called you Rat Boy. Oh, you'll need that later. <laughs> I love that he just goes as if he's got to talk to him and just flips him off. Hey, Bob, you taking the same date to the Christmas party this year? I, I figure she'll give you a discount now that she's turned 60. Kiss my ass. Ouch, what a devastatingly witty retort. <laughs> Why, look. There's a lion at the watering hole. <laughs> Hardly. More like a wildebeest. I like you, Curtis. There's more to you than meets the eye. <laughs> She's right about that. She's super assertive, and you'll find out why later. <laughs> So here's another Easter egg that I'd never tried. While you are in Warner's office, click three or more times uh, on the weasel, the stuffed weasel, and you'll get a, in it, a zooming in and out of a weasel cam. This egg will not work in chapter three. Again, a lot of these Easter eggs are things that you would have to do out of the norm like typing words or clicking on something that is not or does not appear to be clickable you've got to stop it or i will i'll kill you you son of a bitch can I do for you, my boy? Oh, nothing, sir. I, I've, I was just looking for a Word 8 manual. Is that all? Yes, yes, that's all. I'll have the systems group send one to you right away. Great. Thanks. Goodbye now. Something seems up with the boss, right? Well, there is. spinning around hmm. 
This is normally where your buddy Trevor would sit, but he's not here. Now Trevor Good shows morning, up. Sleeping Beauty. Well, were you uh, up too late watching Beavis and Butthead or organizing your stamp collection? Actually, I was up early this morning. My rat stole my wallet. Yeah, a likely story. Yeah, yeah you just couldn't haul your lazy butt out of bed, huh? Huh? I, on the other hand, have a social life. Uh huh. Yes, I was out dancing until dawn. <laughs> But here I am on time and fresh as a daisy. A daisy, huh? You know, I could say something. D don't you go there. <laughs> don't go there. I'll have to see you later, mean boy. Mm -hmm. You know, in hindsight, I guess it was a little more obvious having just rewatched that part about Trevor. <laughs> You're such a pretty girl, Blob. So Blob, who we know is the rat. Or mouse. And then everyone's extension. It does pause on this screen here for a minute because I actually physically wrote down all the extensions because I figured I'd be calling them all in order to see if anyone had anything different to say as I called them. Now we're going to go ahead and log into the computer. Oh crap, I changed my password. Oh damn, what was it? So if you recall, we looked at the photo and Blob's photo was there. So it's a good guess that Blob is probably the password. But was it? Too obvious to me at the time apparently looking for that piece of paper that's flipped over that has the password on it and now we go down the line of people to call Dracula which is on the night It's hard to tell if he's saying Jane, which could be a female or a male, or J, like J A Y. Bite me, weasel dick. Because he could be saying like J and I, but J and I, like A N apostrophe J and I. Hello, Curtis Craig. This is Ed This is what happens when you dial Curtis's own extension. Dollars. Mr. Craig, please. Mr. Craig, stop it. Your squealing has become painful. Have some dignity, man. It's amazing that the rest of the people sitting around him don't already think he's crazy. Hi Tom, this is uh, Curtis. I'm just calling to let you know that the uh, Venom and document uh, will be finished on time, and I'll just go ahead and post it. All right, thanks. Three speaking. Therese, hi, it's Curtis. 
Um, could you? Uh, I, was, I was wondering if. Um, I. <laughs> well, this is gonna sound really lame, but I just forgot why I called you. That's okay. You can call me anytime you want, Curtis. Bye now. That was pretty lame, Curtis. That really was. That's what happens if he tries to call Bob back. Yeah, PA Warner. Um, sir, this is Curtis Craig. I, uh... Curtis, how are you, son? Um, um, just fine, sir. Thank you. Warner seems uh, unusually to friendly, to considering a, a you were just in his first, office and, uh, breaking I in. on the uh, network place last night. Fine work, son. Fine work. You're one of my best. You know that? I'll be keeping my eye on That's a little weird. I also think it's really weird that you can just sign in as anyone if you know their password. This is where I was trying to type in the nudity code. Couldn't remember her name or how to spell her name. Thankfully, there's a lot of me dilly-dallying around in this game so that I'll be able to speed up portions where I'm not talking so that the playthrough will not be six and a half hours long. Hopefully, I can trim it down to a more reasonable size. I'll probably do the same thing I did with the first Phantasmagoria. I'll do the commentary as one large version to watch and then I'll also break it down by chapter because this is also broken down by days. So I think there's a total of six or seven days similar to Phantasmagoria 1. So there'll be one big uh, lump file and then there'll be the chapters broken up into portions. There you go. So now it's active. The password here is blob to log in as Curtis. It's weird that right off the start with day one, things start going weird. They're like there's no buildup. That's that's the only downside. Like I love all the characters. I love this game all the way up to like I said before, that last chapter. That last chapter is horrible. But everything up to that is actually pretty dang good. I just wish there was a little more buildup. I mean, we did see Travis, sorry, Travis, Curtis uh, in the psych ward. So you know there's some issues, but I wish it was more a more subtle start, like hearing voices versus straight up being hit in the face. Like that should have been a day two thing. Like a day one should have been like, he logs into the computer, hears voices sees things happening on the screen, maybe sees a photo of Blob talking, because Blob ends up quote unquote talking to him later. So I would have liked to have seen more of a slow, gradual build up to that. Now that Trevor is actually in his cube, we can talk to Trevor. Hey Trevor. Hey my man, what's up? Jesus, what happened to your face? What if I said I don't know? Shit, Trevor, I think I'm going nuts. Curtis, what, what happened? What, did somebody hit you or something? 
I was, swear to God, I was just sitting at my desk and um, somebody slugged me, but and there was nobody there. That sounds nuts, doesn't it? Yes. It's just totally psycho. Yes. <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, hey, remember when uh, when I got the flu and I thought Dolly Parton was in the closet with a chainsaw? Probably got a virus. Kurt. Yeah, yeah it's, um, that's probably it. A virus that hits you in the face? is higher than mine. Have you been to uh, any of the restricted areas? No way. Is that there or something? And I don't want to. Boy, they're probably like breeding two-ton hamsters down there or something, man. So now we know why Tech has some restricted areas also. Somebody's hot for your little ass. Dodd. Again. Now it's far more obvious watching it again. Have mercy on the poor girl about Trevor. But it's kind of difficult, too, because some... I mean... Some people jokingly talk like that. I do it all the time. Like, I'll go, oh, you look so sexy to a male friend. And mean nothing about it other than okay. just being silly. So... Mm -hmm. I have this. Oh, those are folks. Mm -hmm. Nice looking couple. And listen what he says. No, you look a lot like your mom. Your eyes. It's two people that says he looks a lot like his mom. And you figure they're building up to something, but I think it's just mostly the fact of the relationship we eventually learn that Curtis has with his mom, which is not a good one. <laughs> Do you remember that party at all? Ah, uh, no, it's uh, it's all a blur of white rum, hot music, and really bad food. Damn good thing you're a perpetual designated driver. Yeah, that's me. A sobriety poster child. <laughs> you know, I do seem to remember Bob blowing cheese on the dance floor. Mmm. I really do like the dynamic between Trevor and Curtis. I feel like that is, it feels like a legitimate friendship. Just go down the list here, find out each person's uh, title and their extension, which we already have written down from that notepad. So we've clicked the file that we're working on. I scroll through the letter. Uh, I was reading it, but in the event, do you want to read it as well? I'll try to remember not to fast forward through this section. Because all these little letters you'll see, and we'll eventually get to email and stuff like that, uh, will lead to what Wine Tech is hiding or what they're up to. For the archive password, We've not seen how to get that yet. Uh, 
And then the computer seems to short while you're working on the report. Seeing a flashback of what appears to be Curtis's mom being taken away. But we'll find out more and more about her as the chapters go and the story continues to unfold. And you actually find out what appears to be the truth. Her being taken away was definitely not the last of it. And now, more freaky stuff. Just a hand coming out of the monitor. And now he's in a straitjacket. Hello, Curtis. You miserable, insane wretch. I'm not insane. Are you not? But you know your mother was. Not, not, not always. Well, you're right. She wasn't always the violent, gibbering, drooling lunatic she became. Was she? You drove her to it. I did not! I was only six years old! Yes, a six-year-old little monster who drove his poor mother to madness and finally to suicide. No! So there you go, you find out she apparently also committed suicide. But before that... Freak. She did some pretty horrible stuff. So as always, when something major happens, try to go back through and talk to everyone you can to see if they have something new to offer. Curtis, what, what's wrong? I hope there's something wrong with me. God, I'm seeing things. Curtis, hey, uh, okay, you'll be okay. Um, look, let's let's get out of here for a few, huh? I'll I'll send mail to Tom. He won't mind, okay? So this is the uh, cafe, the Dreaming Tree. Well, 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 the boys are playing hooky. Shame on you. Shame isn't part of my vocabulary. Well, it must be. You just said it. See what happens when you waste a good line on a straight line. I think he said, see what happens when you waste a straight, a good line on a straight boy. I think that's what he said. All right, bud. So that's maybe another indication? Try. Talk to me. What happened today? I saw something, that's all. Something I don't think was really there. And it said... Way to leave your friend in suspense, it said. Curtis, for God's sake, I'm your best friend. You know you can talk to me, don't you? I know, I... You remember how I told you about my mother going crazy and leaving my father and I alone? Yeah. It's not true. I mean, I thought it was, but until a few days ago, I remembered that she hung herself from, from our ceiling fan. Jesus, man, it's harsh. No wonder you're so flipped out.
Curtis, don't take this personally, okay? But have you thought about talking to someone? I mean, all that stuff about your mother, that's an awful lot for you to deal with alone. Yeah, I've thought about it, Trev, but look, I'd rather be dead. I'd rather be dead than have to go back there. Hey, nobody's talking about sending you back. Just talking about counseling. Okay? See, he's such a nice friend. Yeah, okay, I'll think about it. Look, you're the only one I've told about this so far. I mean, you're not going to tell anyone, are you? Of course not, fool. Are you kidding? My, my own therapist has made me so close to perfect, I, I never tell secrets. I never tell lies. Hell, I don't even crap anymore. I just excrete rose petals from my belly button. Very weird best friend, by the way. I have enough energy. I'm going to go slog through it right now. Well, me too, come to think about it. So, what do you think? Let's get the hell out of Dodge. Let's go, Miss Kitty. So they sat at a table and apparently didn't order food or drink, and that's okay. And now that you've extracted your ID from the wallet, you no longer have to click it every time. You just click that door and it'll automatically open for you. As if you swipe the badge. So we see these random letters appearing. Couldn't remember at first what it was, but I eventually remembered. Oh, look, it's six letters. And see the B O Y eventually appear for the last three. But for now, I totally was like, whatever, need it off my screen, can't cancel it, get it off. Forget it, rat and there's your clue forget it, rat boy. Now we're in the email. And it's cool that they actually have, I mean, it's pre-generated, but you can actually respond to some of the emails. that ask, do you want to reply sarcastically, serious, or, or whatever? Well, I thought that was kind of actually cool. You ever feel like you're not caught up on email? Like this has to be on Monday. There's too much email here. Control A, mark all as read. This is what I mean, like straight reply, funny reply, a sarcastic reply. Well, Trevor pretty much just sends jokes. There is a lot of email. Just hit send, Curtis. Just hit send. <laughs> Having not played this as frequently as the first Phantasmagoria, when I played it for this playthrough, I was literally trying to get everything, every little nook and cranny of every story, 
and I'm not sure the jokes between Curtis and uh, Trevor really, really apply to the story. But I mean, they help seal the friendship thing. But really, not a lot of important story stuff going on in these emails. We're halfway through. <laughs> it is weird that when you reply, a copy of your email appears also rather than this somehow being sorted by inbox and outbox and sent. For the love of Phantasmagoria, just hit send. All right. Finally, the last email. So that looks like a lot of stuff that I can just fast forward through. Uh, if you want to actually read those and take the time to see what they say, you can pause the video or check out the non-commentary version where I don't speed up any of this stuff. But yeah, there's just, a lot, just not a lot to talk about with these emails. So if you want to read them, uh, pause the video or check out the non-commentary version where I will not speed up to the point where I have nothing to say about any of these, so... I'm not sure if there is any difference for which emails you send. I don't think it, it affects anything game-wise. All right, done with the email, oof. And unless I see a Paul Allen Warner, the happier <laughs> I'll be. I do like that they do small things like that rather than just not letting you go there, that he will actually comment on, on stuff like that. So that's one of the things where when I moved the, mercer, the cursor over that door, that door I feel like should have been clickable, but it's not because you actually have to put the cursor way at the top to actually be able to go out that back door. So I thought I was stuck for a while until I realized moving the cursor all the way straight up, not there. Welcome to being trapped. <laughs> there we go. Now once you move it all the way up, you can move all the way to the back. And this allows you to actually move out of that freaking door. Would have been much easier if that was clearer somehow. Again, moving all that stuff out of the way. Spoiler alert, we do not have what's needed to get in here. The screwdriver, although it does highlight, it is not enough to get into this door. It's kind of a clue the way he hammers his hand in there. So then we move all the stuff back.
So Bob is clickable again. Would you happen to know what happened in the network this afternoon? My document appears to be missing. <laughs> you lost your document? That's a new level of incompetence even for you. Again, uh, Bob's fate is about to come to a painful end very soon. Can I ask you a question? Anything. Do you think there are things in the world beyond what we can see? Yeah. I think we're surrounded by things we cannot see. Things we cannot see until we start looking for them. Curtis, I think she means you and her. She is not the queen of subtlety, that is for sure. But you'll find out more about her personality and why she is such a strong female, confident woman. <laughs> Notice this time there's something different. A cutscene. Oh, hey, Dries. How are you? Fine. Excuse me? You heard me. It's cut the crab, Curtis. I find you very attractive. Listen, Therese, I have a girl. I don't care about that. I don't want to be a prom date. I want you. I want your flesh. And your sweat. Curtis isn't doing bad for himself, really. He's got two very attractive blonde females after him. One whom he is dating, the other who just wants a piece of him. that there's a badge reader but you actually cannot go through and it's funny because there's a glass door there but it's not painfully obvious that there's a glass door there I notice that's how we're trying to get to and it comes up with this thing I remember what he keeps calling you. Take some patience for it to happen. And I literally just missed it the first time. There's the R. Do you already know what we're going to spell? If you do, type it in the comments. Oh, look at that, look at that. Boom. That's right, it is Rat Boy, because that's what he keeps calling you. Freaking Bob. Hey, 
Great. Let me get out of here. All right, it's time to leave. That means we're almost done with day one. If you go to the dreaming tree, you get to meet for your wonderful date. Hi, yourself. So, will it be the usual today, sir and madame? A jalapeno and honey grilled cheese sandwich for him and a veggie burger for her. You know, I'm not all that hungry. No, me neither. Yeah, how about a couple of those uh, double chocolate little things, small for yours? You got it, boss. Hi, sweetie. How was your day? Uh, pretty much sucked. <laughs> Ever the pessimist. Curtis, I want to be there for you. I want to help you when you're feeling bad. You just mean so much to me. Yeah, I'm jealous. I know. It's. I just wish. I wish I could be there all the time. That's all. She has a very codependent type of a personality with how much she wants to be there for Bob. But she is Bob's... Bob. Sorry. Uh, for Curtis. She is oh, Curtis's you know saving Curtis. grace. Cute. Yes. What for? Why are you always trying to hide this gorgeous lady, Curtis? I mean, if I was you, I'd follow her around with a spotlight. <laughs> Thanks, waiter guy, for making it awkward. What's the matter, Joe? Curtis, I know when we started seeing each other, we said it was just for fun. No commitments. And and I meant it too. I really did. I just sometimes things change. I love you, Curtis. And I'm not trying to smother you or anything. I just want to be with you. I just... I just want to be with you. Jazz, do you remember that night we went to the park? <laughs> oh god, it was so hot. We brought a loaf of stale bread to give to the ducks. <laughs> and they all oh, came. Oh, <laughs> I never knew there could be so many ducks in one <laughs> pond. And you, you ran from them. Oh, they were gonna eat me. <laughs> mm. Remember what happened when we uh, got rid of them? <laughs> of course I do. Speaking of eating, <laughs> it was so hot and your skin was so slippery. We found that dark spot underneath that tree. You had to stop moving anytime anybody came close. <laughs> and you, you made those sounds, those sexy whimpers because you couldn't stand it. Curtis about to ruin the mood. Kill that slut. Kill her like you killed your mother. Curtis, are you all right? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Jess, I'm not... I'm not feeling good at all right now. Oh, baby. Do you want me to come over tonight? I'll make you feel better. <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah, that sounds nice. Let's get out of here, okay? Whatever you say. The card falls out of your wallet. Good luck, Curtis. If you ever have any more troubles, call this lady. She's one of the best. Spoiler alert, you end up calling her. Actually clean the apartment for a change. Oh yeah? Well, where'd you put the steam shovel when you were done? Oh, that is cute. Uh... Oh, don't I know it. So here, uh, there is an Easter egg that I did not do. When Curtis and Joycelyn are sitting on the couch in the living room at Curtis's apartment, just before the concluding movie to Chapter 1, hold down Alt and move the cursor over Jocelyn's breast area. Do not click yes. now or at any point during this Easter egg, but move it uh, up, down, and around. Every now and then, a sound file will be heard. Keep moving the cursor in this specific manner until you have heard... Brisky, brisky, fresh, brisky, brisky, and then honk, honk, combined with a laugh. For good measure, wait a few more brewskies before continuing gameplay. And in this scene, there is actual nudity. Her breasts are clearly visible. Uh, so I put a sensor bar over it, and you can barely, barely, barely see the scene in the background. Uh, but you can definitely hear it. <laughs> but yes, he does take off her shirt and uh, her breasts are seen. And then she's laying on the bed and he puts her hand like down the front of her stomach and uh, his hand goes into her belly button, but like not in a, not in like I just accidentally put my finger in your belly button, but like fully into her stomach and like her guts come out. But then he wakes up, and it's it's not real. <laughs> and right there, she's reaching for a condom in his drawer. shows her breasts when she sits up. <laughs> Alright, and that is chapter one. Alright, so we are headed into the second day of Phantasmagoria 2. Scene starts with a cutscene at the office. Things look normal. But something bad is about to go down. Say goodbye, and it's Bob, so asshole. does anyone really care? Considering Bob is the a hole in this? And if you look closely, there was blood on the towel that apparently Curtis 